Sarah Ferguson has had just about as tough a treatment in the media as anyone, and it's hurt her deeply, as you'll see in a moment. But she's overcome that hurt, and what's more, now she's no longer fat, nor broke. Today, Sarah is as much a businesswoman as a duchess. The Duchess of York was in town this week as part of her new job, a super saleswoman selling fine china and herself. It was the week that Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, swept into town and I found myself struggling to keep up with her. You're not worried? Not at all. I'm in safe hands and I feel really good, Richard. Well, I find it terrible. I Do hate you? it. Yes. Do you really? Well, you're very brave to have come up this far. Yeah. And you better scoot on down. Even during time off climbing the bridge with Sister Jane, this consummate saleswoman doesn't miss an opportunity to plug her product. The only sadness is I didn't bring my wedge with teacup because I, <laughs> I wanted a cup of tea at the highest point. High tea. What, what High tea. High tea. What about the children? Will you bring them up here? Yeah, definitely. They'd love it. You don't get weak in the knees. No, not at the moment, Richard. Are you saying you do? Yes, I am. <laughs> oh dear. I'm... But you're so brave. You've been to Afghanistan and all these places. It's been six years since Sarah last came to Australia. During that time, she's completely reinvented herself with a new career outside of Britain and away from the royals. Do you need to work? Yes, absolutely. Well, for the I money don't or for the time? For the money. Oh, is that right? Yeah, yes. I'm a single working mum, two girls, and I don't, get, I don't have a trust fund or I have to work. Is it, I, I can only use the local language. I mean, is there some handout from the Queen? No, no not at all. Nothing. For those of you who don't know me, you, um... <laughs> the only things she Which, has uh, to trade are her breezy, bouncy it. nature and the royal connection. It's very really nice that way, isn't it? Okay, carry on, Fergie, keep going, I can hear. It's a one-woman show, a bit Oprah with a hint of How Jerry Springer. And what's her name, madam? Just Jean. Just Jean. Just Jean. <laughs> You're great, good luck, Jean. Now, if you hadn't already guessed, Fergie is in Australia to flog plates and teapots and cups and saucers. Her audiences are the curious and the converted. So we'll have to look around and have, you want a good look at them and see what you're getting. You see what you're getting, yeah. You wouldn't want them to slip in a second on you or anything like that. <laughs> you are a businesswoman now, aren't you? Uh, what is a businesswoman? All I know is that I, I work hard, very hard, and I try and get my head around figures, which um, I used to be frightened of. But now I realise that when I, when I realised it was a fear, that I was actually frightened of finances and thinking I couldn't do it. And when I realised it was actually OK, you just have to learn, um, it's much easier. Can you hear me at the back? Morning. Morning. Welcome. 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 This is a fine bone teacup, all right? And I'm going to stand on it, okay? 18 okay. hour days. Right. It's quite tiring. We, we keep up quite a pace. New faces. <laughs> different cities. But always more of the same. You're not? No. Yes, you are, Lorraine. Come along. Fergie will go just about anywhere to sell, anywhere that is, except Britain. <laughs> We're not exhausted. Why do you only do this outside Britain? 
I mean, it was legitimate. It's legitimate insight, too. No, it's my decision, Richard. Um, I really respect Her Majesty. I mean, uh, well, what's for it me, got to do with her? Well, because that's who I respect, and she's the monarch of the country that I live in. And um, also, I think she's one of the finest people I've ever met. And I believed when I left the royal family that it wasn't right to trade on my name in the UK. And that's what I've been. Many, many people have accused me of that. And, and nowadays, I'm not. It's Sarah Ferguson. Wedgwood is certainly getting its money's worth out of Fergie. Her effort alone has taken the brand from sixth to second place in the huge American market. Couldn't cope at all. But I couldn't help but feel there might be better ways to spend your time than signing plate after plate after plate. Sometimes there's 500 pieces and I just sit here all day long. And you'll see this afternoon when people come by, I do this all day long. Hours later, and the slog goes on and off. Not that Sarah's complaining. Companies like Wedgwood and Weight Watchers took her on after she had run up $8 million in debt with Coots, the royal bankers. With the Queen refusing to bail her daughter-in-law out, Fergie found herself both fat and broke. I um, was on that rocky road of really your weight's out of control, your money's out of control, everything's out of control. And I don't think I really understood the ramifications of my actions. And I believe um, I had a, a lot of debts and well, I had to work hard. Who were the extended the credit? Well, that was then. We won't go down that road, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so you paid it all back? Absolutely. Well, I'm nearly there. Still got a few more to do, but we're nearly there. Six o'clock in the morning and the Duchess's day begins, she says, after just four hours sleep. This gets your metabolism up ready for the day. And it gets your mind clear and it's like a good meditation. Weight Watchers are paying some of the bills, so she can't afford to get fat again and she'd do anything to avoid a repeat of those cruel headlines. A lot of people said, oh, they ruined my life. They didn't. They gave me my life. Because had they not written the things they did, when was I going to wake up and take myself seriously? So I'm really pleased. Yes, but uh, I'm sure the, the one that hurt most was that Duchess of Pork. No, the one that hurt worse than that, Richard, was 82% um, would rather sleep with a goat than Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> that was the sun. <laughs> it was a good one. But the, you know, the snivelling little sub-editor that wrote that Duchess of Pork, he would have been... <laughs> <laughs> yes, wouldn't he? Yeah. That'll hurt. Exactly. And that'll hurt. And yes. indeed it did, Richard. And it hurt to such a degree that I went and ate more. And I put on, and I got to 220 pounds. And I just became completely... Um, had to have food in order to, dumb, um, to numb the emotional pain that it felt. It was horrible. It was 1986 when Sarah Ferguson married Prince Andrew. She was fun, feisty, and she broke all the rules. But within a matter of years, breaking the royal rules broke the Duchess. I was married into the royal family. I um, always wanted to try and get advice. And every time I ran along the corridors to try and get advice, it was always... Um, you know, there was, well, you can't do this, you can't do that, or don't do this, or don't do that. So in the end, I didn't know where to turn. And I used to call them the grey men because it was always grey, you know. And they had grey suits and grey, everything was grey. And so I, it was never, well, well done, what a good idea, or why don't you, or, you know, it was always, no, no, no. Uh, was Philip the head grey man? No. No. Pass. 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 No, He's a very good grandpa to my girls, and I think it's fair to respect him for that. He's a very good grandpa. Jane, you've, your daughter didn't put ink all over me, you have. Oh, sorry. Well, Asha, hurry up, come back. <laughs> I got the sack. Excuse me, Jane, can you yeah, you're, you're sacked. Okay. Goodbye, Jane. <laughs> yeah, well, got Aisha, you come and sit here and be calm. Goodbye. <laughs> now, Sarah Ferguson <laughs> is more or less <laughs> her own <laughs> boss and a bit bossy to boot. No. If you do this now, you're not going to get it later. It's your decision. And it's better not to do it now because I can't concentrate on three things at once. I mean, you've, you have got hold of your life and you've got it together. Well, thank you, Richard. I, I, I sort of, I, I am not frightened to admit my endless mistakes and that is good. A constant refrain from Sarah over the last three years has been that Andrew and herself are the happiest divorced couple in the world. 
Famously, they've lived together, but apart, apparently, in the marital home. Do you know a fellow called um, Harold Brooks Barker? Yeah. He masquerades as the publisher of Burke's Peerage. Oh, right, yes, OK. Talking about you, <laughs> she wants him back and she knows he can't resist her in bed. And then talking about um, mm. him, Andrew, the more he sees his sexy, curvaceous ex, the more he wants her. Now, how the hell would he know? <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? And do you know people would actually read that and believe that? Coming from being a people pleaser, if you'd have shown me that before, I would have gone, oh no, but I have a... Or I would have, you know, oh, I would have really taken it as this is gospel. You know, but now I just go, well, that's very funny, isn't it? Oh, nice that he thinks I'm sexy and curvaceous. <laughs> <laughs> well, sexy or not, a full reconciliation is just not on. During the week, Sarah told me that next month, April, she's moving out and taking the kids with her. Well, I think it's, um, it's, uh, it's the Queen's house. It's Her Majesty's house. And uh, Her Majesty's been very kind to let me stay there for the last three years. And, uh, but I think it's now for me, time for me to stand on my own two feet and not, um, you know, accept the kindness of Her Majesty um, anymore. You know, I can do it now, thanks to Wedgwood and to Weight Watchers, and I'm proud to be able to say that I'm um, able to pay a rent at the end of every month. How much? <laughs> Would I tell you? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's just say it's in Stirling. <laughs> it's in Stirling. We can't afford it here. Then. <laughs> but, I mean... I wouldn't have to be Albert Einstein to, uh, to guess that you know, maybe there's a boyfriend around for you or a girlfriend around for him. And that's why you have well, to change uh, he's arrangements. Well, he's not here to answer that, so we won't discuss that. But um, with me, there isn't a boyfriend around at the moment. But who knows? And it's exciting. You know, it's fresh, it's fresh journey ahead. And I'm an independent, single working mum. And, you know, I'm also a human being. And it's quite nice to be taken out to... Uh, to dinner and things, but let's see what happens. Maybe there's more chance of boyfriends coming in now I'm on my own, in my own house. That's a point, isn't it? With that delicate matter dealt with, it's onwards and upwards for Sarah Ferguson. I love this! As the likes of me fall by the wayside, Sarah I, Ferguson I go, gives every impression that she's on top of the world. One, two, three! Today!